Now this doesn't happen very often, but it is easily one of the most satisfying things in World of Warships. Being able to target the enemy carrier within a minute of the game starting is pretty awesome. And of course, since it's a tier 8 carrier, well, we're going to be able to overmatch straight through them. This is something the Yamato can definitely do, probably even a little better than the Shikishima since it has the volume of shells, where Shikishima only has six shells in the air and, well, it gets a slightly better reload. But when those shells do hit, yeah, 27k onto that carrier. <laughs> oh, you love to see it. And now, of course, I'm also asking my friendly carrier to go and spot him again so we can kill him off real quick. I'll even take some blind shots into a carrier at this point since it's so valuable to take care of him. In a game like this where there's no DDs, yeah, the matchmaker is weird these days. Of course there are submarines, but they're not the fastest and there's only one. So if we manage to take out the enemy carrier, it's going to dramatically increase our odds of winning and make our game that much more comfortable. I'm in a Shikishima alone on a flank or relatively alone. I do have some backup and this is usually where you just don't want to be in a battleship especially into a carrier since you're just asking to be struck over and over and over again until you've donated all your HP to the carrier's damage total. But if we're able to get rid of this Lexington, we can absolutely carry this game. Since the map is a bit of an odd one, there's usually a stalemate on the decap, and it really comes down to whoever wins the 1-2-3 line and is able to break that stalemate on the decap through the use of crossfires. Since this Lexington is, well, still not really moving all that much, we're probably going to finish him off with this salvo, at least if we get a little bit lucky and get ourselves a citadel. We're still only at 9 shell hits and 40k damage. That is the absolute strength of Shikishima. A low number of hits for a huge amount of damage. Each shell does a ton. And unfortunately, we get a little unlucky on that salvo. I do think we probably kill him most of the time there, but that's okay. We're still able to shoot him again. And that's the true strength of a Shikishima or Yamato or a Musashi for these carrier sniping abilities. They have great shell velocity over range. Since the shells are so big, they don't lose a lot of their velocity to air drag. And the overmatch is pretty nice as our friendly Yamato tags in and finishes off the Lexington. Less than four minutes into this game, and in a random battle, without a div, we've managed to take out the enemy carrier. And, well, that guy probably didn't have the best game. The rest of us now get to enjoy ourselves without getting struck from the air over and over again. And I'm going to take full advantage of this, pushing down the one line, slowly building a crossfire, and forcing the enemy team into a corner of the map. This is one of the best ways to win and secure games once you've built an advantage on a flank. If you're able to box the enemy team into only one quarter of the map and your team controls the other three quarters, it's pretty much game over for the enemy team since they can't angle to everyone. So that's why I'm just gonna slowly push my way up here, not too quickly, but slowly work my way through, forcing this Kerfurst back, forcing the Cleveland back. Fortunately, the Cleveland didn't decide to sit on that island and start spamming me with HE while being relatively protected behind that island. And I'm just going to slowly push up this flank and hopefully allow my teammates, who are a little bit narrower, right? You can see we got some cruisers and a Yamato pushing up along the three line. That is a relatively safe position if I'm able to push this curve first even further away. And yeah, you can see how much map control we have compared to the enemy team at this point. They do have the decap, but well, once you control the one, two, three lines, it's very, very easy to gain control of C as well, since there's really no way to contest C cap from their side without exposing themselves massively to our broadsides. And I really do think that the Yamato class is one of the best battleships that you could possibly play still. It's just such a classic in the game, and there's no gimmicks here that really make it only work in certain scenarios. The gimmick is overmatch, massive guns, right? And that works no matter what. If you're close range, long range, you're getting focused by the enemy team, or maybe you're having to push in. It's not like you're reliant on your secondaries, for example, or some HE or anything like that. It's just a classic battleship that's good in all scenarios. And because of that and its versatility, 
we can do some massive damage through sniping. Every Citadel, of course, is nearly 20k in a Shikushima, but with the Yamato, 14,500 plus a few more pens because of the extra shells is going to be more than enough to do huge damage to these cruisers and a lot of the battleships that we see along here as well. And that's one of the reasons I'm playing the Shikishima today. The reason is I've been feeling like I suck at battleships recently. And I took a look at the recently played battleships that I've been having. And it's German battleships like the Preussen or the Schlieffen. I'm trying to play a secondary build Ohio. I'm trying to go for these crazy aggressive brawling plays in a meta that really just doesn't support them. A solid sniping support battleship that slowly pushes up a flank. Well, that's just going to be a way more consistent playstyle than something like a brawling battleship. And yeah, we punched through into the NC Citadel finally and managed to take him out. And of course, this game is pretty much over at this point. It's just a matter of cleaning things up. That said, it's not the easiest thing in the world to aim at these extremely long ranges. My aiming video is extremely old at this point. I, uh, yeah, I went back and took a look at it. Yeah, that's definitely one of my earlier videos, let's just say that. But a lot of the things I had to say there is still true when it comes to aiming at long distances. Using the X on the minimap, trying to predict where the enemy ship is going to go, using dynamic crosshair to hopefully lead your targets enough horizontally. All these things are very important for hitting shots at long range, and even if you do things relatively well, sometimes the salvos just aren't dropping, and that's okay because at least we haven't overcommitted where we're reliant on that one single salvo to magically dev strike someone. So I'm trying to play this more passive battleship playstyle, and it's really gone well for me as I've played a couple Yamato games, a couple Shikishima games, and they've all been really, really solid. Unfortunately, that little salvo there dropped low, but being able to predict what people are going to do and being able to support your team in a flank or even being that major central capital ship pushing in, it's a really massive strength of the Yamato class. And I think you should be trying to play these ships if you're struggling with battleships at all like I am. You've been trying to play the brawling style, trying to push in, and it's just not working. I think the Yamato is one of the better ones that you could go for. Of course, I did a one take on the Republic recently, and that one worked out pretty well as well. So what it comes down to is accuracy at range and the ability to impact the game early on. In this case, taking out the carrier within a few minutes of the game starting. That is always one of my favorite ways to start a game, even if it doesn't happen all the time. It's very satisfying when it does. As for the captain build, of course, it's just the standard build again. I haven't changed it and I don't plan on changing it for some time. If we're trying to be good in every situation, not overkill into secondaries, trying to maximize our close quarters potential, but be solid in every situation, I think this is going to be the best possible build. And it seems to work very, very well, no matter what game I do find myself in. Of course, the upgrades are looking like this, at least on the Shikishima. I'm very much valuing Auxiliary Armaments mods since the AA is all right on Shikishima, thanks to these Harugamo 100mm turrets kind of dual purpose secondary AA guns that do a reasonably good job. The Shikishima AA is much, much better than the Yamato and is definitely one of the reasons to get it. I don't think you should get it if you don't really enjoy the Yamato yet. Um, the playstyle is no different. They are very, very similar. But if you want a Yamato with a little better AA, faster reload, but more RNG based in the uh, shells, since there's only six instead of nine, but you do get a faster reload. The Shikishima is a really, really good pickup, and I've had a lot of fun with the Yamato class in general recently. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.